Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a quick look at uh, integration of MuseScore 4 MuseSound output into a workstation project. So um, with the use of uh, MuseSounds in MuseScore 4, I've, I've had very little reason to go to a workstation to use virtual instruments uh, and to do MIDI mock-up work uh, because the um, orchestral sounds play so well inside of the MuseScore environment. Now one question that's come up about uh, MuseScore playback using Muse Sounds is uh, control over various effects and reverb. Um, if you go to the MuseScore website and you click on download software, uh, at this point you will be able to find a section for nightly builds and at this point in time the nightly builds uh, do include control for reverb. So if you click on whichever operating system you have and you download that, um, you will save it then to a folder. And in this case with Linux, it's, a, it's an executable app image. Uh, as a portable self-contained installation. And uh, you can open that and then we have our project. Now if you look down here on the nightly build, among a number of other issues that have been dealt with underneath the hood, you'll see that there's now a reverb switch. At least in this iteration it's what it looks like. And right now I have all of the reverb turned off. So there's no reverb at all uh, on this project. I'm just going to play it back and you can hear a little bit of what it sounds like without reverb. Uh, so that's the sound that we get. Um, if you look at uh, just an instrument, if we just say select the horns here, we'll play this back again without reverb. So obviously there's still a little bit of uh, room sound in there from what they recorded, and there might be some uh, a little bit of uh, decay that you just can't get rid of that's just embedded inside of the play engine. But that is as dry as it gets, uh, and it's pretty dry. It reminds me of, um, you know, film score kinds of recording sessions that are usually quite dry. I remember back in the 90s, all the Danny Elfman stuff that was coming out at that time was extremely dry. It sounded like all of the instruments were individually recorded up close. Very, very similar. Uh, in one respect, it's actually a very clean sound. Um, and when you have everything in context, if I play a little bit more here, we'll start, uh, go ahead a little bit. It's really quite a sparkling sound because you're hearing those samples up close and personal. Um, I've, I've, after playing with this, I've almost decided maybe to run a number of projects just completely free of reverb at all. Um, just render it all as dry as I can make it and let that be it. Um, it certainly does, you know, present you with a little bit more capability in mastering later on because you're not dealing with that tail decay in the reverb uh, on all of the effects that you apply in the in the final uh, mastering and compression that you do. Um, nonetheless, uh, this also gives us the ability to set the level of reverb uh, instrument by instrument. So one thing you could do here uh, that I've done, if I enable all of my reverb now, is I have placed a, a varying reverb on different sections. So I have a, a higher amount of reverb deeper in the uh, ensemble geographically uh, and less more up front. So I have all the strings here which are very close to the front. I have it set at about 10%, very very low small amount of reverb. But then if I go to the woodwinds I have it set at about 20% and then for the uh, percussion section I have it set for about 30% 
And then the brass, so that you can get a little bit more of a ring and body on it, I have it set as high as 40%. The default setting I found uh, when I loaded up the first project was 30%. If you do it brand new, um, with, you know, at the default reverb settings, it seems that 30% seems to be what MuseScore had their reverb set at um, for this particular plugin. You can also enable the plugin individually, uh, separately. You could turn it all off here and you could enable the plugin just on the master if you want to. You could add instances of that as well. Um, so that's, that's how you enable it and this is how you can set the percentage, uh, that it is sending to the effects send, uh, bus. But, and, and you don't have access to that bus apparently. I don't see it and that's okay. Uh, this just seems to be how it treats it, uh, instrument by instrument. If we play this back, you can hear the difference. So you can really dial in a style uh, using this setting now on the nightly builds and I believe that 4.1 will be coming out relatively soon and this will be implemented uh, permanently. Um, so we have very dry, drier strings, slightly more wet woodwinds, you know, very wet brass as you kind of go deeper, uh, a little bit more stylized. Um, now this gets me to what can you do with um, dry signal? Uh, one thing that you can do, of course, you could export um, sections uh, individually you could you could export every individual instrument if you want to and bring that into a workstation project i do caution you though uh in exporting separate stems instrument by instrument it's extremely process heavy you'll be waiting a long time uh and it will beat up your processor uh considerably to do that um, but what i've done here is i exported sections so the way you can do this is you mute what one way to do it is you could just copy the project and then delete all the instruments you don't want and then export. But another thing that you could do is just mute everything except for uh, what you want to export. So, for example, uh, if I do this and I mute everything except for uh, the strings section, we'll say strings and piano, uh, and I just want to export this, what I can do is go to uh, File, uh, Export, and then I'll select Wave. And then I'll just export my main score. Now, as you can see here, you can select all of the different instruments individually and export that. But it takes a long time, and the processor just runs at the roof uh, during that. I mean, hours it could take. Uh, from what I could see with a score like this, about a four-minute long piece and that many instruments. This is just a Core i5 uh, Intel processor. Um, so that's what you're dealing with. Uh, but anyway, you can export uh, that section, and then you come back, and then you mute uh, those instruments, and then unmute the next section. So I might do the percussion section and do all of them together. So it's a little bit more efficient, I think, to do it this way and just work in stems that are larger sections. Now, if I want to isolate an instrument, I could do everything but that one instrument in a section and then do that instrument separately, and of course I can tweak that. But once you've done so... Uh, you have um, uh, all of your files will save to folder. So I've got one for brass, one for percussion, one for strings, one for woodwinds. The other thing I did is I made a, uh, a separate track uh, in the project that I called a time, and I exported that as a MIDI file. And that MIDI file now has all of the tempo and meter changes. So the first thing I do is I import this into my workstation project, and it will uh, enable uh, all of my time signature changes and tempos up here. So what I could do is if I had a MIDI file, let's say uh, a MIDI track from my uh, MuseScore project that deals with synthesizer, but I want to use a specialized synthesizer that I would use in my workstation, I could then export that MIDI file, drop it in here, and it will automatically align with all of the WAV files that I bring in. So uh, I won't have to map those tempos out. I can just bring in the MIDI tracks and they will automatically uh, align. So, Or I could bring that in and now I can compose uh, direct from uh, keyboard. I can play in parts, but I already have my uh, meter uh, material here set up. 
I can enable my uh, metronome and then I can play in. Uh, we're not going to do that right now though. I'm, I'm demonstrating what we can do here with these uh, different stems. So these are dry, as dry as we can get, uh, stems for woodwinds, brass, percussion, and strings. And now if I go to my uh, mix setting here, uh, I've put in a bunch of different uh, um, effects. Now before I enable these, you can just hear what it sounds like uh, without any effects enabled. And this is very similar to the dry output that we were getting from MuseScore directly. So now what I can do is I can add specific uh, effects and alterations uh, to sections or to individual instruments. Of course, you can make this project as big as you want uh, and mix and match with uh, MIDI data as well. Uh, so the first thing I did is I put a compressor on everything. So I'm just compressing just very light compression for each section so that uh, individual uh, instruments can pop out a little bit better. And then I have all of this funneling down to a bus. So that way if I add another instrument, it will come to that bus for that section. I can apply it to everything. Just a little bit more efficient workflow. And then I've got a room uh, which all of these different buses come down to. And I have uh, a reverb applied to the room. There's a very light small room reverb. And then what I did is on each individual section I applied a secondary reverb or an underlying reverb. I left the strings blank and the strings are just going to funnel down to this one last final room reverb. But then under percussion uh, and under brass and under uh, woodwinds I applied these other uh, reverbs. Right. Uh, and I, they're, they're staggered so that the deeper you get in the ensemble, the bigger the reverb. Uh, and then on top of that, I also put some uh, uh, EQ uh, that I applied to the woodwinds. And one thing I know that I've seen in woodwinds, taking up uh, frequencies that I don't want them to. So I put a little bit of a, uh, a crunch on the bass so that it's not filling out those bass frequencies the way woodwinds are really not supposed to. They're much, much thinner in the bass area. Now, MuseScore already deals with that quite well, but I've done this uh, to, to add a little bit to that. And then uh, here I've got also, um, looks like I've got a saturation that I applied to the uh, brass just to kind of thicken up their sound a little bit. Samples tend to be a little thin in the brass area, so this helps a little bit to thicken that up. So now with all of this enable, enabled, and then on the final mix down I have a compressor, I have a tape simulator, uh, and uh, that gives a little bit of saturation and some of that mechanical uh, simulation that you might get from a real recording session uh, to tape. Uh, this is the final output. So it's more stylized, right? You have a little bit more control. And of course, the ability to uh, import MIDI data that will now perfectly align with all of my audio tracks uh, exactly in place. So that is uh, the concept in a nutshell. And of course, you could do this on any workstation. It doesn't really matter what you're using. And Linux, if you're using our DoorQ tractor or something else, uh, and then, you know, any of the uh, main workstations for Mac and Windows as well. Uh, just using WAV files and uh, mixing them together with uh, MIDI data to uh, make uh, a much more stylized and highly controlled uh, final mix uh, and getting the benefit of those Muse sounds uh, as that VST, or that, that instrument player, that library is locked into uh, MuseScore at this point. So uh, you'll have to export as WAV. Anyway, good luck with that and happy mixing.